this is Mr. T with uh, another tutorial on integration. In this uh, tutorial we're going to be talking about a new integration technique called integration by parts. Uh, this technique is a little bit more complicated than the other one so we would always try to integrate using some other method first either using a basic integration rule or possibly integration by substitution. If those methods don't work, then this would be a, a method to uh, attempt. This method works when our integrand is comprised of some sort of algebraic term, you know, x to some power, uh, multiplied times a exponential or a log term. The particular integration by parts rule is shown here. So we have the integral of u times dv, so we have a product of two things and using integration by parts that can be broken down into u times v notice no integration sign here minus an integral of v times du now in this formula when we apply this rule we still have a integration symbol so we still have to apply uh, some kind of integration technique to this part of the problem so this type of rule is called a reduction formula or reduction technique because again after applying the rule we still have an integration symbol to resolve however when this rule works that integral is simpler than the original one probably one of the most uh, challenging or parts of integration by parts sorry for the word there, integration by parts, is the correct selection of what to pick for u and what to pick for dv. On some problems uh, it won't be obvious about how to split up the integrand. Some general guidelines, again these are guidelines not hard and fast rules. The part that we want to pick for dv, we want that to be the most complicated part of the integrand that we can pick, but it needs to be able to be integratable. So we have to pick part of the integrand that we know how to integrate using one of the basic rules. Guideline on picking u is we will be taking the derivative of u to create du. And uh, our objective is that when we take the derivative of u, it becomes simpler. Uh, in general, that's going to mean a lower power, a lower degree on the algebraic term. There will be some problems that involve a natural logarithm, and while that part might seem to be the most complicated part, we cannot choose the len part as part of our dv because we don't have a integration rule, a basic integration rule for integrating the len of x. So when we have a len, that will always be part of the u when we do the selection. So let's talk about how we apply this rule. Just looking at these letters, it's not going to be clear to you about how this rule works. So let's look at our first example. Now we cannot use integration by substitution here because if we pick u to be x, u prime needs to be 1 so we have an extra x. If we tried to do integration by substitution we essentially end up with the uh, same problem. So x becomes u, e to the u, du, so we end up with the same problem. If we tried picking u to be e to the x, then uh, my u prime would also be e to the x, so that doesn't work here. And if we tried formal substitution, I would have to solve this for x, so we would get x equals the len of u, and if we proceed again, we're going to have an issue. It's not going to work. So integration by substitution does not work. So to use integration by parts, we have to pick, again, something for dv. And we have to pick the part that's u. Because, again, our integration rule here is we, have, we break our integrand into u times dv. And once we do that, we can then use our uh, integration by parts rule here. So I'm going to pick, again, our rule for picking dv is to pick the part that's complicated and integratable. So this part is going to be our dv.
and this part that's left over will be our U. So we've consumed the entire uh, integrand. Now over here in the formula we need, we have U, that's the X, but we need to know V. We don't have V. So how do we find V? Well we know DV and how do we undo a derivative? And that's the integral. So on this line we need to integrate. So when I integrate dv, I get v. And whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So when I integrate dv, I get v. And when we integrate e to the x, remember our basic rule for that is it's e to the x. And we'll leave out the plus c here. We'll deal with the integration constant at the end. Now I also need du in our formula. So for the u part, to find du, we have to differentiate. So if we differentiate both sides, the derivative of, d, of u is du, and the derivative of x is dx. Now if we look at our formula, we have u times v, so we are going to take u times v. So we're multiplying here and then we are subtracting v times du. So this pattern, if you set it up, it's sort of a way of memorizing. We're going to multiply on this diagonal and then subtract the integral of this. So if we apply our rule here, our integral of x e to the x dx is u times v, which is x times e to the x. So this is u times v minus, now we have an integral sign as part of our thing, v is e to the x, and du is dx. However, now notice that this integral is simpler than our original integral, and in fact it can be integrated using one of our basic integration rules. So if we complete the problem, we just apply the basic integration rule to this and we get e to the x. And at this point we'll add our integration constant. So this could be our final answer. We could also, if we choose to, GCF factor out a e to the x and leave the final answer in that form also. So that's our first example. Okay, we now have example two. So again, we're going to use integration by parts. So our first step on this is to make a selection for dv and u. So uh, the e to the x is my most complicated part that is integratable. And if I take the derivative of x squared, it's going to be uh, reduced. So remember, we on for the u, we take derivatives. And for v, we are going to integrate. So the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. To apply our rule, remember we're going to take u times v. So we're going to do this diagonal here, u times v. So our answer, we have x squared e to the x. And then minus v times du, and we have to integrate that, so e to the x times this, so we're going to have 2x e to the x dx. Now this could be written, we can pull the 2 out, And again, we can't integrate that. We don't have a basic rule for that integration by substitution. Now, if you remember uh, example one, we just integrated this and we could pull up that answer, but let's assume we hadn't just done that problem. So this is an example where we have to use integration by parts uh, more than one time. We have to repeat it. So we now have to take this part of the problem and apply integration by parts again. So we have to pick a u and a dv. So we're going to pick 
dv to be ex dx and u to be x. Same as always, we integrate, I mean, we differentiate the u so that we can find dx, and we integrate the uh, dv so that we can find v. And we have to now, for this part, so we still have in our original problem, we still have x squared e to the x minus 2 times what we're going to replace this with, and we're going to be using the integration by parts. Now, this is one of the most common areas where, pe where you're going to make mistakes is you get wrapped up into doing this second integral, and we kind of forget about this first part. So remember not to drop anything that we've done. So now we have u times v, which is x e to the x minus the integral of v times du, so ex times dx. And we can, I won't, uh, we'll go all to one color here. But now we have something we can integrate. And we'll add our integration constant. So now I need to distribute this to Actually, the negative 2, so I need to pay attention to my signs here. So I get negative 2 times negative here. I get positive. And I could GCF factor out an e to the x as we did in example 1. And we have our final answer here. So again, in this part, we follow the same procedure as in example 1 but we had to apply integration by parts repeatedly. So in each step, our integrand gets uh, simpler. So we go from an x with a power of 2 in the original problem to an x with power of 1 to no x, and we get to the point we can do this. Okay, let's move on to example 3. In this case, we have a problem that has a lin in it. Uh, now, we talked about our rule with lim, but let's say we forgot about that and we followed our basic guideline, which is to pick dv to be the most complicated part. And as we've done in the other problems, we would pick u to be our algebraic term. So if we take the derivative of u, no problem. However, when we go to integrate uh, dv to find v, we're stuck because we can't integrate uh, the lin. So we have to try something else, and that's a good point when we do integration by parts. There will be times as we get into more complicated problems where what you choose for dv and u the first time might not work. That doesn't mean integration by parts doesn't work. It just means you need to go back and make a different choice. So let's try here uh, to pick our u to be the lin of x, and let's pick dv to be uh, x squared dx. So now, again, the, the u, we need to figure out our du, so we are going to uh, differentiate, sorry, differentiate u, and we know the derivative of lin of x is 1 over x. And we need to integrate here to get v. So if we integrate, now when we apply the integral rule here, we get, remember, we add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Now this is going to be tricky here because now we're using both our old derivative rules and integral rules. So as you go from row to row, you need to keep track whether you're integrating or whether you are uh, differentiating. So now we can apply our rule. So we need u times v, again this diagonal. So we have x cubed over 3 times the lin of x minus the integral of v times du. So that's x cubed over 3 times 1 over x. And we can simplify here. We can uh, cancel this x out with one of those, and I'm going to bring this one-third out.
and we ended up here with an integral that we know how to uh, integrate. We have a basic rule for that, so now we have x cubed over 3 ln of x, our u times v. And now we have our 1 third out here, and then times x cubed over 3, and we'll add our integration constant, so this becomes 1 ninth. So I could factor out uh, GCF, I can factor out an x cubed, and again this becomes 1 ninth, so I'm going to factor out my uh, fraction of 1 ninth. So now if I take x cubed over 3 and divide by x cubed over 9, I get 3, and I have this ln of x here. And here I factored out the entire thing, so we have minus 1 plus c. And we are complete. So by picking our ln of x to be the u, we know how to take derivatives of lens, but we can't integrate them, so we're able to work the problem. In our final example, we'll use uh, integration by parts in a way that maybe isn't obvious, and we could, uh, at this point, develop a rule for ln of x, uh, integrating ln of x, because earlier we said we didn't know how to integrate this. But let's think about how we could use integration by parts on this problem. So we have to split our integrand into u and dv. Now we said earlier when we have a lin, we can't pick that as our dv because we didn't know how to integrate that. So our dv now, there's no x or other term here, but we still have the dx, so we'll let dv be dx. So again, if we follow our integration by parts, we're going to take a derivative here. So du is 1 over x dx. And we're going to integrate here. So if we integrate dv, we get v. And if we integrate x, we get x. So v equals x. So now we apply our integration by parts, and we take u times v. So we have x ln of x minus the integral now of v times du. So that's x times 1 over x dx. This simplifies to be 1. or just the integral of dx. And the integral of dx is one of our basic integration rules. And we can factor out an x using GCF factoring. And we've now just integrated ln of x dx, which we earlier said that we didn't know how to do. Theoretically, we could use this as one of our basic integration rules, but uh, since it's a little bit more complicated, we generally don't do that. And again, we can use integration by parts to integrate our ln of x. And this concludes our tutorials on integration by parts, and good luck in working your own problems.